concern is for you on the South Shore and out there in Bristol to Plymouth counties around that, that uh, Norton area and moving into Taunton as well. From there, it would move over toward uh, the Bridgewater area as well. Okay, I can see it just moved again on that last radar sweep, and uh, thank goodness phones are waterproof these days. Huh? That storm is moving really very close to the radar site, so I've switched over to the one that's south of Logan that Jason talked about. It's called a terminal Doppler radar. It doesn't have as long as reach as the uh, other one, the one coming out of Taunton and Norton, but it does give us a, a better idea when these storms go right over the radar site and they get into that cone of silence so you can't see them anymore because the radar actually shoots right underneath them. So uh, you're not going to see anything, but the one that's farther away is now capturing it. And we can see that rotation still pretty strong out there, Jason, unfortunately. Yeah, so down here, Kevin, I'm just now graphically able to just point to exactly what you've been talking about. So yeah. we're using a radar beam that's shooting here from near the south side of Boston down into the storm, and you can see the, the lightning. This is indicative of a storm that doesn't want to go away yet. When right. there's lightning being reported here and detected by the network, you know you've got a storm that's at least maintaining its intensity. Uh, this tornado warning, again, goes over into Plymouth County. You're not in danger right now. It's the Norton area right. that is seeing the worst of it. And then also, Kevin, thankfully, yeah. those storms over, over toward Plymouth have moved out into the water now and not to return. Right, you had some storms down there, had some rotation and even a water spout earlier, correct? Yes, uh, lots of pictures uh, on social media of that, uh, and it looks it looks legitimate here. Uh, we're getting a report also uh, trees down roofs ripped off of homes in Lincoln, Rhode Island, right uh, under, yep. right when that storm formed uh, uh, just moments ago, Kevin. Right, so that would be just north of Providence, Rhode Island, but just south of Woonsocket. That's the Lincoln area, and that's the same storm that moved into the Attleboro's and is now crossing over into Plymouth County at this hour. It's really still in eastern Bristol County, but uh, it's on its way into western Plymouth County and still has that rotation. I can see it clearly on radar here. I'm going to switch over to another uh, velocity mode so I can get a better look at this. But the bottom line is what you're seeing on, on TV is, is a kind of... Um, is, is what we're looking at too and reflectivity which is what, what we show you when we're looking at rainfall still shows that kind of a hook pattern on it jason and you've been seeing those hook echoes they've been rather pronounced for a new england storm haven't they yeah really and and just a, a reminder you know we don't get tornado warnings up here all the time and so you know if you live in norton potentially easton is another uh, community this will likely pass just south of there uh, but yep. again just interior room away from windows lowest floor basement yeah. Stay safe. We're on the air until the threat passes. Norton Center is really the place that just passed by, Jason. It looks like on, from the mapping I'm looking at and has in its sights uh, really the city of Brockton. The city of Champions has to be ready for this to come your way as well. It's not uh, right on top of you yet, Brockton, but it's something you're going to have to watch for. And there'll be some damage out that way as well. But that's, a, that's the biggest city in line. But anywhere between, say, Bridgewater and Brockton is going to have the storm pass on through there. And you're in the tornado warning. Well, Brockton's not quite in the tornado warning. That's the boundary of the yeah. tornado warning. But of course, these can always be advanced in time as the storm gets closer. Yeah, and just we'll, we'll put a tracker on. I mean, this storm is right over Norton Center, Kevin. So if, if it's going to move uh, generally toward those communities uh, over the next 30 minutes, uh, just near the, a little too close for comfort in Easton, uh, definitely some heavy rain and lightning in Mansfield, but fortunately uh, some uh, uh, of the rotation is passing south of there. Uh, did, right. I mean, a, a report of a roof ripped off of a home uh, coming in from Lincoln, that does not go well. That does sound like tornado damage at this point. I don't know what the structure was. I mean, if it right. was, uh, you know, uh, a, a lesser built structure, but still, that's a, that's a, just a pretty, uh, pretty significant report coming in. So that's what we're seeing in the chat room right now. Right. Um, they also, Jason, that, that Twin Rivers Casino is out that way too. So it's a very busy area. Uh, there's a lot of businesses out that way. So hopefully there's nothing, no, nobody in the way of the storm. But there's also some farming area out there. So you have to be careful which, what's going on with the roofs being ripped off. It's a, if it's an old barn, that's one thing. If it's a home that's supposedly built to better standards, and that's a whole different story. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Kevin, are you able to see what I'm showing on TV right now? I'm not right now, Jason. Uh, the, the rain coming down, we had to cover up the monitor, so I'm sticking with the phone right now. What do you got? Okay, no, I just I didn't know if I could speak with you about what I'm seeing, but fortunately... Uh, I can bend down and take a look at it if I'm not on camera. Can I do that right now, guys? Uh, yeah, if you, if you can. I've just got okay. a, a loop of the last hour, so you can see the path of this as we've been following it all afternoon long. We broke in 
uh, right around 3.30 when it was issued. And then at 4 p.m., the National Weather Service went ahead and extended this warning. Um, okay, I'm seeing it now. As you can see, the you know the the length of this um, right through Lincoln, yep, and right off, right right past Lincoln. I'll just I'll zoom up a little bit so we can get over that the CG. But see, you can tell that you can that, see the hooking happening just before it got to the Lincoln area in those first few frames. So almost, gosh, I'd have to say almost definitely a tornado at that point, Jason. Yeah, it's uh, really a, a tight a tight rotation there. And as we went through time is it crossed over into uh, parts of western Bristol County it looked like we were kind of losing some of the signature uh, but again I mean that could have just been due to the proximity to the radar site at that point um, and so it did just, look like it, it uh, decoupled a little bit meaning it didn't have the the strongest rotation to it for a short time but of course you know these things can pulse up and down too yeah that's probably what we we're seeing uh, and Kevin and I were, were just texting and, and kind of sharing our thoughts here and uh, doing the best you can texting while you're, you're talking on TV but uh, hey I'm glad, glad we can bring you the team coverage today uh, from the studio and from Fenway from two different perspectives, just a new way of, of doing some things, looking at some different tools and using all the resources that we have. Uh, but right now it's over 495. Uh, Kevin, if you're looking at your... Yeah, I'm just amazed by the hook that's showing up there. And in this situation, I mean, that's that's usually reserved for supercells on hot, humid days, especially here in New England. But to get it like this today is just astounding. It's a really cold pool aloft and enough of that wind shear, uh, you know, the, the winds out of the southeast of the surface and powerful winds really maximized up through the late afternoon aloft. Now, I was looking at some of the wind shear parameters going deeper into the evening, yeah. and I could see that the stronger winds aloft were going to start to actually settle farther south of us as this potent disturbance tracks over to the east and kind of pushes some of that, that stronger wind to the south. So we have that going for us, going ahead in time. Most concern right now is south of Boston. I am watching some of those thunderstorms back over central and western Massachusetts as well, especially with the World Series beginning tonight. We want to have all of our bases covered and just keep an eye on everything. But right now, uh, really over the Norton Center area, is this moving just east of 495? Can you see, Kevin, on your uh, terminal Doppler product if this has moved uh, over the 495 area now? It's, it's very close. It actually looks like it's separated a little bit with a, a pretty strong area of um, wind right over 495. And the rotation's a little broader now uh, from Norton Center right across 495 and stretching uh, not quite to Bridgewater, but in that direction. Yeah, I and mean, I've actually got that up on my phone now so I can see exactly what you're talking about. But yeah, just some really um, nasty storms today. And looks like I'm just getting some video in of hail um, uh, coming in, uh, I'm not exactly sure where, uh, but in the vicinity of the tornado warning, some reports of what looks to be pea size to potentially dime size hail. Nothing that would be doing any damage, but not a But a something surprise. you always expect when you have a tornado is to get some hail with it too, of course. Yeah, and you know, be careful for the lightning at the very least. Uh, there's been, unfortunately, a lot of wind damage today. Let me go back to the chat room and see what else we can find. Um, yeah, you've got to expect that when you have a storm like this with the rotation we've been seeing, uh, you've already had some damage reports. And uh, unfortunately, there's going to be some more coming through that, that South Shore area uh, through Bristol County. No doubt going to be something out of Norton and uh, Taunton, likely that area. And now uh, pushing over toward Bridgewater and Brockton will be watching this storm as well. More likely Bridgewater than Brockton, it looks like right now, because of that more direct east than, than northeast track. Don't you think, Jason? Yeah, let me. In fact, I'll just put a, a, a tracker on it. As I'm, I'm looking here right across. Man, there's a couplet right on 495. So if we're going to do this and just, yeah, it, it, would, it, would, it would appear to me that, that if you live especially the north side of Bridgewater, uh, that you're going to be uh, looking at some some strong winds at the very least coming by. So this is passing uh, just south of Easton right now. And um, we're going to have to watch as this, if, if, if it did hold together over toward West Bridgewater by around 437, yeah. it's moving at around 20 miles an hour. So we can't take that um, you know, to the down to the very minute, but it's that gives you a rough idea if this tornado warning is extended. Uh, you're looking at just after 4.30 in the Bridgewaters to really start uh, getting right. uh, your coverage plans going here and, and staying extra safe with this because a lot of damage reports coming in in the path of this thing. Yeah, yeah it's, it still looks like a pretty powerful storm, unfortunately. And uh, up, here at, um, up here at Fenway Park, and, and I can see that storm with the hooking now on the uh, K-Box radar, radar there, Jason. seems to be getting out of that cone of silence, so it's seeing a little bit better. Um, but um, 
there's, there's a pretty good rain shower going on here too and all the crews, all the TV crews taking cover. But this is not the thunderstorm. This is not the severe weather we're getting here. We're just getting wet. Okay. Uh, so the stuff we're still focused on is down there uh, east of, looks like coming through Norton Center and moving toward Bridgewater right now. Now, and Kevin, one thing I believe you could do uh, with your phone, maybe while we're, we're going to take a live picture, but if you can look at the correlation coefficient of this coefficient of this storm, um, I'm not sure we can do that with a terminal product, but just an idea uh, if we can take a look at that and maybe determine if there's any debris in the air, getting some thunder outside the studio. We do have yeah, a, live, a picture, I, I think. This is, this is a live picture of 495 south of Mansfield that we're looking at as well with our viewers right now. Uh, if you're looking, this is 495 near Mansfield the worst of the storm has moved away from this photo that you're seeing on the mass.cam. But now those powerful rains and winds are coming across Easton and this is moving right over 495 east of Norton. That's where the worst of the storm is right now. Tracking yep. east northeast at around 20 miles an hour. So we're watching this tornado warning through 430. You're seeing on the bottom of your screen, this is for Norfolk County as well. Uh, but that's just the. We're hearing some thunder here now, Jason, too. Oh, there you go. So, and that's another concern for you, Kevin. You know, if you need to take the mask down, I'm not sure what your setup is out there, but obviously you have to stay safe first. So if you have to duck out, uh, then I'll just be here to watch it. Uh, but Norfolk County, you're officially in the warning. You may have heard an alert on your phone. Uh, but I do uh, think that you are out of the danger zone as far as the tornadic winds right across the center of Bristol County, though, not looking good as that has just come through the Norton area, uh, right where our uh, colleagues down at the National Weather Service in Norton are. Just, just for the so, for um, Glenn Field, one of the meteorologists uh, down at the Weather Service, um, said he is identifying this as a very serious situation. And they are actually, he says, we are watching it at the office. Every must take cover. I assume he's saying everyone must take cover uh, at the Weather Service office. So that, it goes to show you that, uh, you know, some of the best meteorologists in the world are down there watching this carefully and they're not taking it lightly. So they're taking 22, cover 22 right 22 years now. here, and I can't think of a time where the National Weather Service was saying they need to take cover from a tornadic thunderstorm coming through. It may have happened, but I don't remember a time. Especially with a brand new building. And they yeah, still, right. they still aren't messing around with it. They've got a brand new fortified building, and they are taking cover down there. Of course, yeah, and they need to. They need to definitely. Yeah. I'm gonna switch back over to that terminal radar because, uh, you know, I'm not just not seeing the velocity. I don't see the correlation coefficient. I checked out, Jason, and um, it's too hard. It's too close to that radar site at K Box to see that. And uh, unfortunately, the uh, terminal isn't going to give me that information. Yeah, the terminal doesn't have that, that capability. Um, right. Well, uh, either way, we know it's a serious situation. I'm looking at the warnings, uh, and it looks like the severe thunderstorm warning uh, has been allowed to expire, but it certainly may be replaced. Either way, we just need to focus on... Yeah, but the tornado warning's still there. Yeah. That's important to note. That's right. We've got to focus on the worst of the, of the winds that are, that are potentially right around this area here. Uh, really right over the radar dome. Uh, so there's <clears throat> there's the, the eastern area back, back toward, you know, Raynham. If I zoom in, uh, you know, north of Rain and, Raynham north Center, of Raynham Kevin. Center. Yep, it's, uh, it looks like it's going to try to split the uprights between Bridgewater and Brockton. So that may be the West Bridgewater area. I'm sorry, I'm trying to balance everything in my hands here, but I had to, I had to protect the phone, so I had to grab an umbrella um, because it was just getting too wet. Uh, but, um, yeah, that, that rotation still looks pretty strong as it moves over into those areas right now. Yeah, that West Bridgewater area, you know, you're going to have to watch. This is 24. I'm, I'm on cam now just pointing out 24 and 138. Uh, those are some of the highways uh, that are in the path of the strongest <laughs> rotation here. Yep. Uh, it's 422, so the morning goes till 430. It looks like it would be just beyond 430 when we were, get, were getting over toward the west side of uh, Bridgewater. So uh, right. it's going to be a close call here as, as to whether or not this can hold together. Uh, but again, we have seen time and time again, just like we did with this one, you can see the rotation start to fade a little bit. And then literally within minutes, right. it, it just gets it gets, you know, re-energized. So we, we just have to yeah. stay with this to be safe. There's that, yeah, it's definitely that rotation there still. I can see it clearly, Jason. Uh, and as a note, the Weather Service office, they can certainly not be in undercover anymore. The storm has passed them, and they're, they're safe. As long as they made it through this storm, they're safe now from this point on. But uh, it's areas to the east of there that have to keep, keep alert. Yeah, uh, moving at 20 miles an hour. Uh, so the storm trucking along, I have not seen it slowing down. Uh, we're not going to see that today. There's a lot of wind energy carrying these storms along. So it's going to be a quick hitting in and out. 
it's getting loud for a, a minute or so, and then you walk outside and you're looking at damage. And so it's just gonna come up on you quick. We want to be on the air alerting everybody in the path of the storm with as much notice as possible to take it seriously because there has been a lot of damage reported along the path of this tornadic thunderstorm yeah. likely producing a tornado at the very least some winds that have done a lot of damage and it's on track for west bridgewater say just after 4:30, uh, potentially inside yeah. of that if you live along 24. i mean the, the only uh, the only good news i can tell you is once the storm passes you by jason looks like there's nothing behind it at least for the time being i, I you know i can see those showers out across central mass yeah. that are going to go north of the south shore but if you can make it and take cover and get through this storm without any damage, you're going to be okay. But that, that's asking a tall order right now for some of these areas. Yeah, let me, just to address what you said, Kevin. So, yeah, after we get this out of the way, uh, we are going to see some good relief here, a bit of a dry slot, and then we're going to have to watch what's going on in Central Mass. I think we have some breaking weather news, though. Blair, Carrie, over to you. Yeah, we're obviously monitoring this as well on social media, and we're just getting some information from Bridgewater State University, some uh, important warnings they're sharing with their students right now. Yeah, they're telling people to take shelter immediately. And Jason, while we're getting this information, let's bring you back into this because I know you're looking through the information as we speak, but there at Bridgewater, and you guys were just talking about Bridgewater here a few minutes ago. Uh, this is an area of concern. They're telling students to take shelter immediately. Yeah, uh, you know, you've got to treat this with utmost care. We had major damage reported in the wake of the storm, and it's now headed, as Kevin and I have been telling you, uh, for West Bridgewater first, just after 4.30. So you've got a good 10-minute lead time. Play it safe. Get to that interior room, the lowest floor of the basement, away from any of the windows. If windows break and you're near those windows, uh, it's not a good place to be. Obviously, the top floor, not a good place to be. We just had a report in Rhode Island, Lincoln, Rhode Island, of a roof ripped off of a home. And so you don't want to be in the top floor because that just produces more risk for you. So here's a look at the big picture. You can see right now uh, the worst of the storm as we'll zoom right back in. Uh, to the north side of the Raynham Center area. Uh, this is where we're seeing that worst of the rotation headed hey, Jason. toward the Bridgewaters. Hey, Kevin, yes. Hey, you got that new severe thunderstorm warning? Just came out for uh, Bristol, Norfolk, and Plymouth counties, it looks like. I'm not sure if it's new, but I just saw it pop up on my screen here, so maybe you can check that out. Uh, it's been it's added to the end of the tornado warning and stretches all the way toward uh, the, the coastline on the south shore, it looks like. Yeah, it's going to be all the way past the Brockton area to Rockland, to Whitman, to Halifax. Um, we're yep. showing that to our viewers right now. I've got the warnings underneath the radar imagery. Radar Im imagery, the most important, but I want to be able to show you that tornado warning. And this is the severe thunderstorm warning. And as Kevin was just telling you, that's going to be extended beyond the expiration of the tornado warning because some strong damaging winds are going to be possible at the very least in uh, places like Bridgewater and potentially all the way over to the Hanson area and points north and south. So we're again, again shooting this radar right into the core of the storm, passing north of Raynham Center. It's east of Norton now. What do you want me to do? Tracking off to the east and northeast at about 20 miles an hour toward West Bridgewater. That's the first spot uh, that we're going to start to be concerned about in Plymouth County. So we'll, we'll zoom in even a little bit closer now uh, and take a peek. Here's that's Highway 24 and 138. Again, those if you're if you're living along those communities, uh, that's where you really want to take cover and, and be extra careful with with what's been happening to the west. We can't play it too safe with this. And Jason, um, obviously this probably won't come as any surprise, but we're getting in some power outage numbers now. About 1,800, 1,841 customers in Massachusetts now without power because of these strong storms. And Jason, you know, as you're going through some of the maps here, and we're talking about, you know, we're here at 4.30, as we come up to 4.30, a lot of people on the road, and we'll be stuck in some of these storms. We've been seeing some, we've been getting some videos sent to us, and we'll show them a little bit later, but of some potential funnel clouds really in the, in the Cape area. And I know you've been mainly focused on this area around Bridgewater, now approaching Brockton, but when we talk about the Cape area, Jason, um, that's kind of concerning to, to hear as well. Yeah, there have been uh, a lot of funnel clouds right. out uh, around the Cape Cod Canal in particular. We had two different reports of that today. Uh, and so, yes, that was one thing that really started to alert me to the fact, wow, okay, you're seeing it on radar. 
But when you start seeing the pictures, well, you know you've got something going on and really cooking in the atmosphere today. A lot of times you see the rotation on the radar and there's really no chance of that rotation getting down to the ground, but a different story today. Uh, plenty of wind shear in the environment. And we're looking now uh, at this tornado warning, goes till 4.30, uh, we're coming up on that time now. We're going to watch and see if there's enough rotation still left in this storm to uh, allow the tornado warning to go beyond 4.30 and potentially butt up into central parts of Plymouth County. Right now we're most concerned about the far western corner of Plymouth County with this storm. West Bridgewater in particular uh, is right now under that heavier rain that's coming across Highway 24 and 138, making its way northeast. We've had reports of some hail, not enough to do damage, fortunately. At least no reports of hail coming in to me uh, that I could see would be large enough to create any problems. But the wind has been the biggest story with this tornadic storm moving northeastward with power poles snapped in half, trees coming down, and a roof reported ripped off of a home in Lincoln, Rhode Island, right under the worst part of that storm as we were tracking it headed toward Attleboro. So just to recap this afternoon, we had our first tornado warning issued about halfway through the three o'clock hour, and then another one issued at about 4 p.m. to extend into the four o'clock hour, and that's the one that we're watching right now as this storm tracks northeastward. Let me go back over to the chat rooms here and see if there's anything else. We've got the severe thunderstorm warning, by the way, uh, right here over Plymouth County. There goes the tornado warning. They've allowed it to expire. Let's just see what else happens here. We have a brand new severe thunderstorm warning in Worcester County now, south of Gardner. I've got a lot of lightning and potentially even some hail and strong wind. Uh, so this is an area that we're going to have to keep tabs on. We'll put the hail scope on uh, right around the Gardner area. Just a heads up. I'm getting some potential for hail in there, although the scope is coming up pretty quiet. Uh, National Weather Service issued a, a, at least a coin size hail alert there for less than three quarters of an inch. Uh, so that's a new severe thunderstorm warning. That goes till five o'clock. So right now I'm, I'm concerned about Westminster uh, near the Hub Hubberston Garden, Gardner area along 68. That's headed for Westminster as this storm moves uh, northeastward as well. So we'll put a quick tracker on that as this tracks uh, up toward Westminster by about 440. And then we'll check back in on our severe thunderstorm warning down here across Plymouth County. So this now is the biggest threat going forward. I'm getting a look at that reflectivity and not able to detect a rotation in there at this time. So it's safe to say that all tornado warnings have expired. Uh, Kevin's back on the air with me. Kevin, what do you got? Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing the same thing. I'm looking at both the terminal radar and the uh, Taunton radar site. Neither one looks like it has real strong rotation where there's still definitely some wind. Uh, it, it may actually be translating to more of a downburst situation with winds, strong winds moving away from the radar and toward the radar as the storm uh, continues on its way. Tough to say for sure if it's rotation or not, but it's not the, the strong couplet or side to side uh, wind speeds that we saw before for uh, rotation that you would we'd be more concerned about. So that may be a, a modicum of good news, but still a very strong storm. It's certainly, uh, and Jason, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not seeing the hooking so much anymore with the cell either. No, um, you're right, Kevin. You know, the, so this, the tornado warning has expired as of 4.30, and I just wanted to just stay on to make sure that there weren't going to be any other uh, opportunities for this to sort of hook back up on us here. Uh, but yeah. we're, we're, from what you're seeing and what I'm seeing right now, um, like you said, it's it's probably transitioning into to more of a straight line wind situation. Um, but but something we got to monitor. I mean, we're going to watch this beyond. Um, not going to let it go, as we are still under a severe thunderstorm warning. Right. And so we'll be able to, to cut back in as needed. And then again, Kevin, that, in northern Worcester County. <clears throat> excuse me, watching up here around the uh, Westminster area. New severe thunderstorm that direction. We're gonna have to watch this lightning threat over at Fenway as this next batch comes through later on this evening. Yeah, that, that one that's up there in Worcester County looks like it has rotation, but you gotta remember that that's shooting uh, higher up aloft, right, Jason? So yeah. not sure if that's translating to ground level right now, but it's definitely a, has rotation aloft with that one. Yeah, that's a good point. So they've got a severe thunderstorm alert on that uh, to cover the, the potential damaging winds there. And then we have our severe thunderstorm warning over Plymouth County. And again, this uh, 
tornadic storm that was tracking across Bristol uh, and out of Rhode Island has, if you just look at the at the laps, I don't know if you can see it, Kevin, but uh, you can see see the the rotation ha- has weakened as it's made its yes. way uh, finally eastward over toward you know Brockton Bridgewater. So West Bridgewater folks taking cover smartly, uh, knowing the history of this storm, but yep. they're they're going to be. They're going to get get out of this one with likely a lot less damage than their neighbors in Rhode Island had. Yeah, I agree with that, certainly. And so that's what it looks like on radar right now to me. Hey, Jason, just so you know, and not that it's a, anything severe here, but um, we've got some pretty heavy rain coming through Fenway Park right now. And we've been telling them that any, any time between <clears throat> excuse me, noon and 5 was a time for the any periods of heavy rain or showers that come on through here. This is a little heavier than I expected it to be down here, i got to tell you, just to be honest with you. But it is um, just before 5 o'clock. It's 4.30 now, 4.33, and this would time out of here by 5. So the timing may actually still work out the same. It's just a matter of it coming down heavier than they may have expected for the pregame festivities here. Soggy, soggy, soggy. I know, um, you know we're, we're in touch with Dave Meller, uh, the groundskeeper over there, as much as we possibly can be. Uh, Kevin, have you been able to chat with him at all? I've been tied up on TV. I know you have. Yeah, too. I, I did chat with him um, just before we came on the air. He, he and the other uh, other executives who were making the call in this game, and so he knew to expect some rain that we'd be on the northern fringes of this this batch, and um, hopefully we're prepared for it. I haven't heard from him since. He probably knows we're in a tornado warning situation, but uh, he uh, he has the tarp on the field here. Obviously, the grass is getting wet, but they they'll take care of that, and they should have a, a good amount of time. To get ready, and, and we're, we're hearing some thunder here, Jason. So we're going to take cover. Okay, you take yeah. over from here. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. And uh, in the meantime, um, Blair and Carrie, I've just got a severe thunderstorm warning uh, for portions of Plymouth County that, that we're continuing to monitor, and also this one in northern Worcester County. Uh, this storm headed over toward uh, the Westminster area uh, right now, uh, maybe over to Fitchburg too. Uh, here over the next 20 minutes, I'll put a tracker on it. Fitchburg by about uh, before the five o'clock hour. So we'll choose at 4:45. Uh, Fitchburg by about 458. This is just something we're going to have to keep monitoring uh, throughout the next couple of hours. So the tornado warning has expired for now, but right now we're under a couple of thunderstorm warnings for the, for the time being, right, Jason? Correct, sir. And if you safely can, please send us what you're seeing in your area. Obviously, these storms are moving very quickly through all parts of our viewing area. So if you safely can send us some video uh, and some pictures, we will definitely put them up there because we want to know what you're seeing. And if, of course, we want to make sure everyone is staying safe out there. We have gotten some stuff into our newsroom right now that showed stuff even outside of where this uh, tornado was. If we can show this right now, this is a wild one. Um, Potential rotation. This is the Cape Cod Canal, though. This is nowhere near where the tornado warnings were. But Jason said he was getting some reports of uh, even potential damage, I think, Jason, right? Down and toward that part of the neck of the woods. Oh, man, look at that, guys. I know that that is that is a really impressive looking funnel cloud there and uh, it, it just speaks to you know the energy that's in the atmosphere today uh, you're seeing this rotation uh, coming across the Cape Cod Canal and now over into the Cape Cod Bay and then about an hour after that report came in we had that tornadic storm over Rhode Island form and track across Bristol County so Lots of damage reports from the Rhode Island and Bristol storm. Uh, this, uh, again, largely over water, uh, but there will be a, a story, uh, I think, later today as folks uh, have to clean up from what was happening to the west of, of this picture right here. Pictures and videos like this coming in to our newsroom while you were talking here in the first half hour since we came on air around four o'clock, seeing some of these images. And here's another view um, in that same area, but actually, this is in Charlestown, Rhode Island. But you can see the clouds, wow. and yeah, what you're seeing that's impressive from a scientist standpoint mm-hmm. for you to see that, right? Yeah, this is the first time I've seen this video, and yeah, you can clearly see a funnel cloud there. Uh, doesn't it's, it's hard to tell in the picture if it's if it's over water or, or if it could be even touching water but you get a sense of you know the rotation in the atmosphere today when you see that that kind of imagery and um, yeah, it's definitely a day that uh, yeah you don't you don't think about you know long track tornadoes but we we had a, a lot of damage come across uh, the, the parts of Rhode Island there uh, this is Charlestown so uh, if I if I can look back and in, in time I might be able to see if it uh, correlated at all with with that particular cell I don't think it was probably a different one uh, that was coming across um, the Lincoln area <clears throat> excuse me just clearing the throat for one sec yeah, Jason no. go ahead we'll continue to go through some of the pictures and video that we're getting in this is from New Hampshire 
Dublin, New Hampshire. Yeah, right. this is the eastern slope of Mount Monadnock when we just had a hailstorm there. Uh, the viewer told us that there was thunder, lightning, and this person told us it sounded like their house was being pounded by rocks. And you see the yeah. aftermath of the hail right there looks like snow. Look at all that. Truly impressive and, and such a wide variety too. This is coming from Athol where you can see more of that hail that people are now reporting and it's almost significant hail that people may not be expected to see this time of year and wow. take a look at this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, truly impressive once again from Athol. Yeah, I mean that, Jason, is not snow on the ground. This is, looks like something you would see back in the central plains, yeah. you know, right. when you have these hails, uh, hailstorms that pile up and then the, the rivers of hail kind of flowing down. Uh, but here we are in Athol, and that storm is likely the one that has the warning on it right now, uh, tracking toward uh, Westminster and eventually Fitchburg here toward the 5 o'clock hour. Uh, the Charlestown video you showed me earlier, I was able to back up the radar, and it was a different storm than the one that uh, did uh, form over the Lincoln area. Uh, but you can see here, that was at 2 255. See the hooking nature of that right there? When you see that hooking in the atmosphere, it gives you pause because you're like, all right, wait a minute. This, this is rotating. Will it produce a funnel? It has the potential to. And we have video of that that you just showed us. And that's what that looks like on the radar. So this was the storm at around 3 p.m. tracking along the south coast where we've had the most instability today down to the south. And so, yeah, there's that video of uh, that the storm that I just showed you. It's that hooking nature, and that's what it looks like here live, or at least live earlier, uh, from a camera uh, down on the ground checking it out up top. Really a, a very busy day uh, as I sat down to get the forecast together um, and just seeing this rotation in the atmosphere, uh, you know, with a warm front tracking across. It's always in the back of your mind, but it's just such a cool and dreary day. We've, so far, no severe weather in Boston, uh, really chilly and dreary, but down to the south, enough enough of the instability there, uh, enough of the warmth coming up from the south to create that, that pocket of hazards today. We should mention right now, you can see sun on the road of our drive cam. This is heading toward Bridgewater. We can see the sun peeking out the windows here at the Boston 25 News Studio in Dedham. This is uh, Route 24 heading towards Bridgewater. We're heading toward that area because that's where a tornado issue was uh, initially um, posted and at one point Bridgewater State University had asked students and faculty there to to take shelter. So you can see how quickly everything's moving out, which is a good thing. Uh, it's really interesting to see what these fast moving storms left behind. And it certainly will be and we've been getting a number of reports into our newsroom and we've been talking with a number of people on the phone and joining us now on the phone, Rob Macedo, uh, who's in Hopkinton and one of our <coughs> weather watchers. Rob, can you hear us? Apparently we don't have them, but in the meantime, we'll be t taking you through some of the pictures and video that we have here. And this isn't random, just truly impressive to see. Yeah, we, were, we obviously can't say with any type of certainty right. what we're seeing, but you can tell it looks like some type of formation of a possible funnel cloud there. Uh, you know, that wide swath of gray and, and, and forming downward. Uh, so, you know, we'll let the scientists kind of give you the more technical uh, terms for what it is exactly we're seeing, but your eyes aren't deceiving you. This was just a short time ago from one of our viewers sending and, this in. And we've seen similar images from the Cape as well, where we saw something similar, a lot of rotation <laughs> Not in the that air. big. But right, yeah. right, not this big but this is certainly impressive to see. And Jason, I know you're watching this closely as we continue to get new information back in here. And we've been tracking some of the power outages about 20 minutes ago. They're at 1,800. They have jumped up to Massachusetts power outages are now at nearly 4,000 people without power. Yeah, so they more um, than doubled point. quickly. Right. And I guess, Jason, that's not surprising given the strength of these storms. No, that video is incredible, really. Not what you expect to see in mid to late October here in southern New England. That's, that's, that's the storm now. So it came across as Kevin and I were tracking it right around the Norton area, just north of Raynham Center where that video was shot from. And you could see that clearly the clearing behind that storm. So able to get a good look at the structure of it. And yeah, a tornado. I mean, Weather Service will be out surveying that uh, tonight. I would imagine they're going to be sending a crew from just down the street uh, to, to go take a look at this damage. But getting reports of telephone poles or utility poles snapped in half a home uh, with its roof ripped off. Uh, we're talking about you know tornadic damage here 
uh, with those kinds of winds and clearly in that video uh, what we saw today. We're continuing to monitor this severe thunderstorm warning back here over northern parts of Worcester County. So again, some gusty strong winds and some small hail are uh, going to be likely here. We saw that video of the hail coming in earlier just being washed away by the rain. And again, some thunder around the greater Boston area is so close that uh, Fenway's got to take their precautions there. But this will go ahead and move away. I was thinking after six o'clock we'd see all this scoot on by, but it's going to be you know, after five o'clock. So this is moving out a little ahead of schedule, but then my concern is this coming in a little ahead of schedule, thinking it might be 10 or 11 o'clock at night, but we're gonna have to watch this as it tracks eastward over toward Boston and could create some problems down into the evening. Meantime, severe thunderstorm warning continues here for parts of Plymouth County, and this is what's left of that tornadic thunderstorm that came all the way across Bristol County out of Rhode Island. Now that track its way over to the southern portion of Brockton right around the Bridgewater area. I'll just put it in motion so we can take another quick look at what's happening here with all this. Uh, there are those severe thunderstorm warnings. This is a three-hour loop and we're looking down here across Rhode Island, Bristol County. There goes the storm. What's left of it now could produce some damaging winds, but not in the form of a tornado. Still though, want to be extra cautious with what is left uh, of this storm right here around the, the east and west Bridgewater area now. So that's the worst of it with the heavy rain. Not getting much lightning in there at the time. A couple of lightning strikes coming across the Randolph area. And we had that lightning strike here around the Ponset uh, that caused us to shut down our signal out of Fenway Park. But that storm will pass. Let me put a tracker on this, guys. Uh, I'll do a, a one hour loop. I'm just gonna track this live if, if, you, if you will let me here. Uh, so we can see what the timing is on this next batch. So it should be moving at around 20 miles an hour. So we'll just put a uh, put a quick tracker on this and see how far it's going. You're just, this is a live a live way to do this here. Uh, this is moving at yeah about 20. So those those uh, uh, judgments are correct. So if we put it at 20 miles an hour, which is what I have my tracker on. It's going to be over to Boston by about 6:45. Yeah, I was hoping we could actually zoom in on the Fenway area just because that's where all right. eyes are, are going yeah. to be throughout the night, Jason. Is so we've got round one kind of in the Boston area right now, and you're standing at the map at what looks to be round two. Yeah, and you know, it looked like this might be a little bit later in the night. Now, there's going to be a cold front that comes through later in the night that will produce a shower threat. So it's going to be touch and go at Fenway tonight. So this is a tracker, again, 20 miles an hour on the leading edge of this. It's going to be tracking eastward into some cooler air. Uh, however, with this warm front that's coming northward, even though we'll have the setting of the sun, looks like we're going to pump in a little bit of warmth out of the south and southeast ahead of this. So my question is, is how much of this will remain? The fact that we have lightning in Worcester County now, it's going to take a while to really collapse all of this activity. So I think we have to at least plan on some showers as we head to 645, uh, 7 o'clock here into the greater Boston area. So you're looking at Worcester here uh, toward 5 p.m. There's uh, Marlboro 530, uh, Lowell 550. Plan on getting wet, some thunder. We'll let you know if any isolated severe weather could be inside of this. But right now, it uh, looks like our severe weather warning has expired there across Worcester County. It's just going to be some lightning and gusty wind coming through Lawrence by about 615. I've got Newton getting wet by about 625. And then it'll be traveling across Fenway, say 630 to 7 o'clock. Uh, so the question is, can we get it out of the way by 8? You know? But as you're looking ahead, you know, one thing is to have storms, the risk of storms and heavy rain. But do you forecast the risk of tornadic weather like what we were seeing earlier? No, I, I think that threat is starting to subside. Just looking at the radar trends right now, there's nothing uh, that concerning anymore. But I, I will say this, this has a lot of lightning in it yeah. and it's certainly, you know, going to creating some issues. Uh, you know, you don't want to be outside. You want to be away from, uh, you know, away from windows. There's going to be some gusty winds with it. Let me look at, at, the, at the bottom of the radar image. This, Blair, if we're going to have any concern, um, with any tornadic uh, weather, it's it's likely going to be to the south again, where we've had some instability. So what we do is we put the the velocity scan back on, and we take a look at what's going on. And this has been a pocket. I've been watching New Bedford. Uh, this was I almost jumped on uh, TV at about uh, three o'clock this afternoon because we started to really see some rotation here, and and I am seeing 
the atmosphere still supporting some evidence of rotating winds. And look, lightning is flaring up again here on the south coast. So I'm really watching from about Plymouth to Providence and points southward, continuing to watch that corridor for additional rotation into the evening. Right now that bright green color, that's some pretty high winds being detected by the Doppler radar and we're beginning to see just a little bit possibly of a, a red uh, pixel behind it. Uh, so nothing you know, that's really caught in anyone as far as putting out a warning, but just showing you what I'm seeing kind of on the radar here behind the scenes. All right, thanks, Jason. I appreciate that. We'll let you uh, kind of cycle through some of the forecasts and some of the models you're looking at right now. So we've been hearing from some of our viewers. Right now we have someone on the phone who's been monitoring this all from Hopkinton, Rob Macedo. Uh, you're with the group called Skywarn. What have you been seeing throughout the afternoon, and what has really surprised you about these storms? So uh, it has been a very active day so far. We've had um, some significant tree and wire damage and even some structural damage in uh, places like North Providence and Lincoln, Rhode Island. There's also been trees and wires down in uh, locations like uh, Norton, Mass. And we've also had a lot of reports of hail, mostly small hail in the quarter to half-inch range. We just received a couple of reports within the last five to ten minutes of hail the size of peas in Plymouth and, and uh, South Dartmouth, Mass. So a lot of reports coming in of the criteria that we look for from our Skywarn spotters. Yeah, and Rob, we've been looking at some of the, and we're showing some of the video right now from the Cape Cod Canal that we see potential funnel clouds or some kind of rotation. Um, not exactly confirmed what this is, and we've seen pictures of the hail that you're talking about. Where do you think the worst damage is going to be out of all this? Well, um, so far uh, from some of our Skywarn spotters and amateur radio operators, uh, we've had uh, reports uh, of the most significant damage right now in the North Providence, Rhode Island, and Lincoln, Rhode Island uh, area. So, so those are the places uh, that we've uh, had the, the worst damage so far, but it's still an evolving situation. So as more reports become known, we will... Uh, um, uh, give them to the weather service and they'll be transmitted out to everybody. And uh, Rob, obviously we've been asking our viewers to send us what they're seeing when they safely can. Have your spotters, uh, aside from the, the telephone poles and, and trees, have they spotted any damage to homes, vehicles, or, or personal so, property? So uh, there, it's, it's still evolving, but we have definitely had um, trees onto homes that we've mm. seen from some of the photos that we've obtained. And uh, we're, we're waiting to see if there's actual structural damage um, without um, um, trees that um, we'll, we, we may see pictures of. As you might imagine, you know, some of these areas that were hit hard, it may take time for, you know, to get into some of those areas to yeah. see what is happening, particularly with the damage in Rhode Island right now. So, and they moved in and out so right, quickly, too. so quickly. And and as these storms are continuing to move through Boston, and we're looking at another round of storms here beyond, behind this, where are your weather spotters, I guess, going at this point? So many of our weather spotters will spot from where they are. Some will, um, if, if, um, if it's safe to do so, check out some of the, the damage areas. And we'll feed all that information to the weather service, and then the weather service will put out the reports and decide, um, um, you know, what uh, caused uh, some of that damage. That's the meteorologist's job. We're here to spot and get them the data that they mm, need sure. um, to actually see what happened uh, in these areas. And we've enjoyed a very strong partnership with the Weather Service and our amateur radio community and our non-amateur radio spotters for many, many years. Okay, Ron Macedo with Skywarn, thank you so much for letting us in on what some of the weather spotters are seeing as the storm move in quickly. I believe right now we are looking at our drive camera once again. Uh, I'll ask my producer if we're still on Route 24. Okay, we are still on Route 24, and you can see this beautiful blue sky now yeah. uh, coming out of this, uh, you know, quick storms that just kind of went through. Yep. I'm sorry, this is 128, yeah. I'm being told, not Route 24, so it's 128, but nonetheless. The sun is now shining, and there's potentially some more weather out to our west, but this is all come and gone quite quickly as we went on the air just before 4 o'clock this afternoon. And, and obviously, as we're about nine minutes away from 5 o'clock, this is the busiest time to be on the road right now in Boston and in the surrounding areas. So a lot of people on the roads, and hopefully uh, with that second round of storms coming, um, hopefully a lot of people can escape whatever is still coming and what's in the uh, Boston metro area right now. We want to send it back over to meteorologist Jason Brewer, who's tracking the latest on these storms. And Jason, I know we're going to take a quick break here in a few minutes, but uh, can you give us the latest on what you're seeing out there? All right, so right now.
now, um, just continuing to monitor, there's our Fenway forecast. I do expect some improvement here toward game time, but I'm continuing to monitor this activity on the south coast because if we're going to see some uh, more rotation, we're detecting that coming out of Little Compton, moving toward New Bedford. Uh, so right now that's a spot that we're going to have to monitor for potential severe weather. And then I'm also keeping an eye on what's happening back here over parts of northern Worcester County, uh, where some heavier thunderstorms are continuing to track eastward. Uh, so again, this is a spot uh, that's going to be an issue up until about 7 p.m. across the area, and then it'll start to move offshore. So I still think some improvement for game time to get ready to get wet here as this comes out of uh, Worcester County. So um, right now, um, let's just give me a, a heads up, uh, producers in the back, Sean. Are we staying with weather um, here until until we get to break here in about three minutes? Is that okay? All right, that's great. I'm going to just go ahead and re-rack this. Then um, I was putting together our futurecast update, and what's what I'm seeing is that we've got some pretty good um, initialization here of the model. So that's showing us that it's got a pretty good idea of where these storms are headed into the night tonight. And you can see by 7 o'clock, the storms are right up around the greater Boston area, the North Shore, moving off of the Cape. And then as we advance the time, there's that quick shower chance late tonight as the cold front comes in. Uh, but we should be able to keep it largely dry as we get into uh, the Fenway forecast tonight. So showers continuing to taper off and looking dry. Then 11 o'clock with that front coming in uh, out to the west, we're going to just keep an, an eye out uh, for what's happening out there across the, the front. So here's a look right now. I'm tracking this downpour activity. The thunderstorms are making their way east over toward uh, Boston by about 645. That's the tracker that's been fairly consistent here and again keeping a, a close eye on what's been happening here uh, down to the south coast Westport uh, New Bedford we're detecting a little bit of rotation here and based on what's been happening today we are going to watch this really carefully so it's just coming ashore now it's over land there's some lightning in there telling me that this storm has some legs here uh, so around uh, New Bedford just be extra careful um, Hubbardston, Mass, nickel size hail covering the ground, continuing to get those reports from our weather watchers around the area. Uh, Blair and Kerry, I'm going to be watching any, any chance of severe, severe weather throughout the evening. We'll send it over to you. All right, Jason, it's been a busy afternoon yeah. here in the Boston 25 News Studio. We've been following a group of fast-moving storms, tornado warnings, severe thunderstorms, and, of course, we are hours away from the opening pitch of the World Series. And right now we have our crews out surveying the damage themselves. I know we've been talking with a number of people who are out there getting reports of damage. Our own reporters are now in the field trying to see survey the damage as well. We're going to keep an eye on all the situation for you. Come back for Boston 25 News at 5 here in just a few minutes.